to my MPC and to make this tutorial for you guys. In today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about input streams. So, what an input stream is, that's where our program can respond to user input. In a different way from just inputting in the command line, you can actually input it while the program is running, which makes it a whole lot more intuitive and, and more interactive. The reasoning behind the input stream is it's a transfer of data. So, it goes in with, with the user at one end of the stream, and then goes down the stream and transfers over to the program at the other end of the stream. One other thing about input-output streams it needs to be handled by an exception ju ju just for safety's sake. Every time, otherwise, you'll, you'll get an error for not handling the exception, even, there is no, even if there is no exception. That's one thing that's different about input-output streams you don't see very often in Java. So, without any further discount of this tutorial. Okay, so as always, I've already named the file, and I have uh, started off with the class definition and the main class. So. For our um, for today, in order to um, for our input stream, we're going to use a class called Scanner, and we're going to, need to import that. Went over that a few tutorials ago. So, type that import Java dot util dot scanner, and there we go. So now we got that imported, so we can reference it, reference it now. And like I said in the um, uh, abstract concepts, we have to always test input out for operations with um, for exceptions. So, hello, I'm MPC from the future. I just like to say that you don't need to check for exceptions in this. I, I sort of messed up there. It's a technicality. You have to check for exceptions for input output ex out, input output exceptions. Anything that can throw an input output exception needs to be checked for that. But the thing is, this program will not be able to be will not be able to throw an input output exception. The reason for that is we're not creating an input stream. We're using the input stream system I in system.in and they're going to use scanner to read that input stream so there's no creation of the input stream and for that reason there are any IO exceptions and therefore we don't have to try for exceptions I mean it won't hurt for us to be able to, to try for exceptions but it's just not necessary so just um, a little input from me so continue the tutorial so we're going to have to try so all of our code will be right here scanner code here and then we'll catch, we'll just say I.O. exception, because that's, the, that's, the, that's what you need to check for, that's the requirement. We could just put exception here to be more generalized, but I'll just put I.O. exception so that you guys know that we're checking for I.O. exception. Must check for I.O. exception. There we go. So, and then I'll just print out something went wrong over here. There we go. You can just guess how I did that with this with Nicole. All right, so scanner code here. We're gonna create a new instance of scanner. So scanner type we're gonna call in input is equal to a new scanner. And in the constructor method of scanner, we um, have to put down what input we're scanning. So in this case, it'll be the command prompt window or in dot in. So that because this is the input method of the of our system. Prompt. And this might, this will just be something that you need to memorize. So now I've created it. Now I'm going to print out some text on the screen. I'm just going to print out. I'm just going to spread out the, the L, print ln method over a few lines so that I can fit it all in the window. So this is now the print ln. What is your name? There we go. And now we're going to do something pretty cool. We're going to create a new variable called string name equal to ion.next line. This is a method from the scanner, because remember ion is what we call our scanner. So the next line will take the next line and return a string. So this method will take the next line, convert it over to a string, and it will store it in this variable. Now we're going to do the same thing again, only this time we're going to print out how old old are you. And we're going to do something similar this time. We're going to create a byte variable this time, so byte age. And in this one, next line, we took a string and stored it into the name variable. And this one, we're going to take a byte and store it into the age variable. So in.next byte, that's all there's to it. So this will grab the next line and convert it over to byte, or it'll actually grab all the anything that can be converted into byte and and grab that and put it in our age variable and that'll be that and now we're going to print it all out so system dot your name is plus name plus and you are plus age 
this years old. Now let's read. Your name is your name, and you are so many years so many years old. All right, and this is our program. The thing you learn is that well, the thing you understand is that we're able to use the scanner class to get information from the from the um from the input window using these methods right here and this makes it the program a whole lot more interactive as I said interactive and make a whole lot um, more fluid I guess and it makes it a lot better okay so compile it and put stream and it had an error Alright, well, uh, I'm not sure why that didn't work. It didn't respond to IO exception. Hello YouTube, APC from the future again. Here to tell you why the pro program didn't work when I put down IO exception. There are actually two reasons. Number one is that when you're ever, whenever, whenever you're working with Java, the stuff you reference has to be part of the java.lang class, or package, sorry. If it's not, then you have to import it separately. And um, even though IO exception extends the exception class, it's not part of the java.lang package. So we need to import IO exception separately. And you can do that by typing down import java.io.star. And that, that's the first reason and primary reason why it didn't work. Another thing is that even if you do do that, it will give you an error because it's impossible for your code to throw an I.O. exception. So in order to avoid inefficiency, it won't let you compile the program. The reason why it's possible to throw an I.O. exception is because you use the input stream system.in, but you don't create one. We're going to be learning how to create an output stream next tutorial, but um, in this tutorial we're actually only using an input stream, we're not creating one. So for that reason, it, ca it can't throw an I.O. exception. So uh, this tutorial is turning into a real train wreck, but I hope, it, hope you can still follow okay. So I have to put down an exception down. Like I said, when I put it down, um, you put down an exception down to generalize. If you don't know the the more specific one, I thought I knew this new more specific one, but I guess I didn't. So yeah, if, if you put an exception down, you can't go wrong. So I just changed it, and I recompiled it, and it worked fine. So now we're gonna run it. What's your name? So you can already see how this makes it a lot easier. It's a lot harder for using like areas if they're asked specifically what they need to be asked. So ask specifically what they need to give. So I say APC and the program will just wait until I input it and then once I press enter it'll 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 um it'll work further. So there you go, it just stored it in the variable. And I am eighteen years old. It says your name is APC and you are eighteen years old. There you go. And that's all there is to it. And it, like I said, makes it a whole lot easier to use and Makes your uh, programs a whole lot, whole lot more fun, I guess. So that's all for this tutorial. Um, stick around for a challenge to see how well you understood it. For this challenge, why don't you make a program like this? So first, ask you what your favorite video game is. Mine would be Kingdom Hearts. Then ask you, you're born in 1993, and then I'll tell you what year you're born and what your favorite video game was. Um, please note that you will not be able to use Byte to store 1993. You'll have to use a different printed data type, so you may need to look up um, what the what that method would look like. So there you go. That's the challenge. Um, that's all for this tutorial. Let's run the outro. You've just watched this Enforce tutorial. If you found it helpful, please like the video and leave a comment. This helps out my channel. If you found the challenge helpful, you can find more of them at my website www.synforge.co. You can also find my games and my other tutorials there. With that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.